In a massive victory for Trump, the Supreme Court rules states cannot kick Trump off the ballot. What is up, uh, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video and today. It is time to talk about the massive victory Trump just got at the Supreme Court because everyone, the Supreme Court just decided that states cannot kick Trump off the ballot for mutt insurrection. Quite frankly, this is a big victory, not just for Trump, but for the country as a whole. This has always been a garbage lawsuit that, if successful, it would have set an awful precedent for future cases. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Again, folks, all support is greatly appreciated, and uh, yeah. Now, let's get right into it. The Supreme Court on Monday handed a sweeping win to former President Donald Trump by ruling that states cannot kick him off the ballot over his actions lead up to January 6th on the Capitol, bringing a swift end to a case with huge implications for the 2024 election. So yeah, this case revolved around insurrection and the January 6th attack. Well, the Supreme Court was like, uh, no. States do not have the right to decide Someone is off the ballot because of insurrection. An unsigned ruling with no dissents, the court reversed the Colorado Supreme Court, which determined that Trump cannot serve again as president under Section 3 of the Constitution's 14th Amendment. Yeah, there were zero dissents. It was unanimous. Even the three liberal justices said, this is stupid. This is a bad idea to do this. I mean... You could have ended up in a situation where each of the 50 states had their own definition of insurrection. Does no one see a problem with that? What's stopping Texas from kicking Biden off the ballot for the southern border? What's stopping a swing state? I mean, Colorado is not a swing state. What's stopping Pennsylvania, which will probably decide who wins the White House? What's stopping them from kicking Trump off the ballot? The provision prohibits those who previously held government positions but later engage in insurrection from running for various offices. And that's actually wrong. NBC News is making it sound like it applied to every position. There was a massive question mark about what does the 14th Amendment even apply to? It says congressmen, senators, governors. I've done like 15 videos and streams on this. It doesn't explicitly say the presidency. It says electors are president. It says the vice president, but not the president himself. The court said the Colorado Supreme Court had wrongly assumed that states can determine whether a presidential candidate or another candidate for federal office is ineligible, which, yeah. Like I said, you would end up in a situation where 50 different states would have 50 different definitions of insurrection. That, that's why the court is saying this is a terrible idea. That's why it's 9-0. Just for that simple fact of, yeah, we don't want 50 states having 50 separate definitions of insurrection. The ruling makes it clear that Congress, not states, has to set rules on how the 14th Amendment provision can be enforced against federal office seekers. As such, the decision applies to all states, not just Colorado. States retain the power to bar people from running for state office from appearing on the ballot under Section 3. And this is a big distinction. If this was a statewide office like state legislator, governor, whatever, that's a, sep that's a whole separate can of worms. But for federal offices like congressmen, senators, the presidency, it's Congress's power to determine that rule on who's ineligible. Which if you read the 14th Amendment, that's what it says. Because the Constitution makes Congress, rather than the states responsible for enforcing Section 3 against all federal office holders and candidates, we reverse, the ruling said. By deciding the case on that legal question, the court avoided any analysis or determination of whether Trump's actions constituted an insurrection, which why would anyone think they would answer that? They're not going to. They weren't asked was Trump an insurrectionist? They were asked, 
do states have the power to enforce Section 3? That's what they were, that was the question here. And Democrats on Twitter are losing their minds that, oh, they didn't determine that Trump's an insurrectionist. The court's rigged. Yeah, a 9-0 decision with three liberal justices agreeing with the conservatives. Yeah, I'm sure they are part of the MAGA cult or whatever. The decision comes just a day before the Colorado primary, and that's why they decided right before the primary. They didn't want Colorado to pull something on election day where, oh, if you're voting Trump, your vote's getting thrown out because he's an insurrectionist. That's why they decided right before Super Tuesday. So they can't pull any games. They have to let Trump stay on the ballot. Minutes after the ruling, Trump hailed the decision in an old capital letters post on his social media site, writing, Big Win for America. In addition to ensuring that Trump remains on the ballot in Colorado, the decision will end similar cases that have arisen. So far, only two other states, Maine and Illinois, have followed Colorado's path. Like the Colorado ruling, both those decisions were put on hold. In a statement, Colorado Secretary of State Gina Griswold acknowledged the court ruling that states do not have the authority to enforce Section 3 of the 14th Amendment for federal candidates. In accordance with the decision, Donald Trump is an eligible candidate on Colorado's 2024 presidential primary. So yeah, according to what the Secretary of State just said, this sounds like Trump really wasn't eligible for the primary. I guarantee you if the Supreme Court didn't step in right before Super Tuesday, Colorado would have said, oh, the orange man is not eligible. You can't vote for him. He's a felon. He's a bad person. Don't vote for him. So I'm glad the Supreme Court stepped in right before Super Tuesday to put an end on this garbage crusade that Democrats are pushing. I mean, really, you're putting all of your effort into stopping Trump by Kicking him off the ballot? Really? I'm glad that avenue was finally closed, but the fact the Supreme Court had to step in for this case is egregious. This should have been thrown out in the Colorado Supreme Court, but no. The ruling warned of the dangers of a patchwork of decisions around the country that could send elections into chaos if state officials had the freedom to determine who could appear on the ballot for president. The result could well be that a single candidate would be declared ineligible in some states, but not others, based on the same conduct, the ruling said. And really anyone that's honest with themselves, they would agree with the decision just because of this. Like I've said, if the Supreme Court of Colorado was somehow correct, you would have 50 different state laws on insurrection. You would have candidates in one state kicked off the ballot for insurrection, but not in others. That's the problem, and that's why, especially for the presidency, Congress is the only one that can enforce who's an insurrectionist and who's not. Although the bottom line vote was unanimous, there were some divisions on the court, which has a 6-3 conservative majority as to how the case was resolved. The three liberal justices, Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson, complained in a jointly written concurrent opinion that the court had decided more than it needed to by laying out how Section 3 could be enforced by Congress. Now, that's why some people are saying, well, actually, this was a 5-4 majority, not unanimous. No, on the Trump stuff alone, it was unanimous. All the three justices were saying was, eh, maybe we shouldn't decide how Section 3 could be enforced by Congress. Maybe we should just, you know, focus on the state stuff. But that's all they were saying. They weren't saying, oh, Trump is an insurrectionist, you know. This is a grand conspiracy by MAGA. No, that's that's not what they said. It was a 9-0 decision for the Trump stuff. Conservative Justice Amy Coney Barrett agreed that the court went further than required, although she did not join the liberal justice's opinion. The liberal justices said the decision could insulate Trump from future controversy. The ruling shuts the door on other potential means of federal enforcement of Section 3, they added. Barrett said that although she had some disagreements with the rationale, the liberals should not amplify disagreement in such a politically charged case. All nine justices agreed on the outcome of the case. That is the message Americans should take home, she added. And I actually agree with Barrett here. Listen, some of the stuff the decision did say about the enforcement of Section 3, I have my disagreements with it, but they could have just left that out and leave it to a future case maybe, but... 
To put it all in this case, eh, I don't think that was a good idea. But I think Barrett is correct that, hey, let us focus on the fact all nine of us agreed you cannot kick someone off the ballot for insurrection. Only Congress has that power. Again, that, that's what the decision was. Though the conservatives, there were some areas they went a tad too far on, in my opinion. I think they should have just left it out. But like Barrett said, the biggest takeaway has to be this was unanimous. Of the actual case, not the other stuff the conservatives said. Of the actual case, it was a unanimous decision. You cannot use the 14th Amendment to kick people off the ballot. Only Congress has the power to enforce it. It's one of those things where it is a really good thing for America that this was unanimous. If this was 7-2-8-1, hell, 6-3, can you imagine all the chaos that would happen? Of uh, People saying, the MAGA court try to rig our elections. You know, they're allowing an insurrectionist. We must tear down the court. The fact that it was 9-0, they can't really say, they will, but they really can't say, you know, oh, the, it's a MAGA court. Some of them already are. They're saying we have to disband the court because the liberals are secretly MAGA. No, it came down to the fact that the justices realized this is a horrible idea. The consequences of allowing the states to kick someone off the ballot with the 14th Amendment, that would cause a lot of problems in not just in 20 years, but this election cycle. What do you think is going to happen in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin that have Democratic courts? Hell, Michigan has one-seat majorities in both chambers. They could have theoretically created a law tomorrow saying, if you are a Republican, you cited insurrection on January 6th, you're not allowed to be on the ballot. And they would pass it. That's the problem with this entire case. Stuff like that. I mean, a swing state that could do that? Yeah, they theoretically could have said if you're part of the GQP, you're part of the insurrectionist party. You're not allowed to be on the ballot. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.